Mind your decisions, I'm Presh Talwalker. In square ABCD, construct AE and AF as shown, so that AF bisects angle EAD. If BE is equal to 36 and FD is equal to 64, solve for the length of AE. I received many emails with similar problem suggestions, and there's also a similar problem on the YouTube channel, Maths Smart. Pause if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. There are many ways to solve the problem, and I'm going to present one method that involves outside-the-box thinking. I'm also going to present two methods that involve inside-the-box thinking. But let's get started on the method using outside-the-box thinking. We'll first label some of these angles. Suppose EAF is equal to theta. Because AF is an angle bisector, FAD must be equal to theta. Next, we have right angles in this square, which means AFD is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. Then, since angle A is a right angle, we have 90 degrees minus 2 theta over here. Here we have another right angle at B, and this final angle BEA must be equal to 2 theta. So here's the trick. We'll take triangle ABE and rotate it 90 degrees about A clockwise. This will go outside the box. Now, let's take a look at this construction. First of all, we have a right angle here because we've rotated a right triangle. Next, D and B prime will be coincidence. This is the image of B, and this is possible because AB and AD are equal to each other in a square. This is where point E will go, and we'll label that as E prime. Now, this will be equal to 36. This is B prime E prime. Here, we copy over the angle. Now, AE is equal to AE prime because we've simply rotated this length. Next, we look at triangle AFE prime. We'll calculate that FAE prime is equal to 90 degrees minus theta. We have two angles of equal measure, and therefore the sides opposite them will be equal to each other. So AE prime is equal to FE prime, and now FE prime must be equal to 64 plus 36, which is equal to 100. Therefore, AE prime is also equal to 100, which means AE is equal to 100, and that's the answer. It's a very clever way using outside-the-box thinking. Now, let's do some inside-the-box thinking. First, we use the same diagram with the angles. Now, suppose the side of the triangle is equal to x. So if AD is equal to x, then AB is also equal to x. In this triangle, we have the tangent of theta is equal to 64 over x. In triangle ABE, we have the tangent of 2 theta is equal to x over 36. We'll now use the tangent double angle formula and substitute that in. Now recall, tangent of theta is equal to 64 over x, so we can substitute that into this formula. We then multiply the numerator and denominator by x squared, so we simplify this fraction a little bit. Now, notice that the x terms will cancel out, and then we can cross multiply and then solve for x squared. We're not going to go any further, we'll just go with x squared. The reason is we'll now look at triangle ABE, and we can calculate AE using the Gogu theorem. AE squared is equal to x squared plus 36 squared, so we substitute in for x squared, and now this particular expression should be a familiar expression we can factor this out. It'll be exactly equal to the quantity 64 plus 36 squared. So AE squared is equal to this square. We take the square root of both sides, and we get AE is equal to 64 plus 36, which is equal to 100. And once again, we arrive at the same answer, but this time using inside-the-box thinking. Now there's a final way to solve this problem using Alkashi's law of cosines. I'm going to present this method because it's the way that I solve the problem. So first, we'll go ahead and label the diagram with a side length of x. This means EC will be equal to x minus 36, and CF will be equal to x minus 64. Now, construct EF and examine triangle AEF. 
we'll use Al-Kashi's law of cosines on the side opposite the angle theta. That'll be EF. So EF squared is equal to AE squared plus AF squared minus 2 times AE times AF times the cosine of theta. Now in triangle AFD, we can calculate that the cosine of theta is equal to X over AF. If we substitute that into the formula, we can then cancel out the AF term and which simplifies to the following form. We can then use the Gogu theorem to calculate EF squared. We can then calculate AE squared. We can then calculate AF squared. So we're going to substitute these into our first formula at the top. When we do that, we get the following equation. This simplifies tremendously. Compare these two terms. The X squared and the 36 squared will cancel out and we'll be left with negative two times 36 times X. In these two terms, the x squared terms and 64 squared terms will cancel out, and we're left with negative 2 times 64 times x. So our equation simplifies to the following form. We then factor out negative 2x on both sides. Since x is not equal to 0, it's the side length of the square, we can cancel out negative 2x on both sides. And we then get ae is equal to 36 plus 64, which is exactly equal to 100. And like magic, we've solved the problem once again. I think this is a really neat problem, and I'm sure there are many other ways to solve it, but I hope you enjoyed a little bit of outside the box and inside the box thinking. Thanks for making Mind Your Decisions one of the best channels on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching, and thanks for your support.